Hello, hey guys. Thanks for coming out again. Um, today we have a fun, a fun one. I mean, it's not so fun if this is you, but we're talking about jaw dislocation or TMJ dislocations today. Um, you could be the patient, you could be the doctor or the nurse or anyone involved in the whole scenario. Um, I'm going to show you how to relocate a jaw. <laughs> you could do this on yourself if you dislocate your jaw, or someone can do this to you, or you can help out, or you can be just some advice for some people um, on what to do. All right, so let's get into this topic. Um, as an oral surgeon, you know, I see these cases probably like three or four times a year. They're not that common. Um, there's a lot of urgency around it. I mean, it's for most people, this is like an acutely painful thing. You know, imagine you have a seizure or you're yawning or one punch to the face and your jaw dislocates, not just on one side, but maybe on both sides at the same time. So you can actually have a dislocation on just one side, but it can also happen on both sides. And that's the most common way where both your uh, TMJs are dislocated, usually forward, so anteriorly, and, and you can't physically curl them out. So yeah, it's tough. It's tough. So what do we do? What do you do if you're in this scenario? Um, what if this is your kid and they have a seizure? And you find them waking up and they can't close their mouth. In fact, they're, they're drooling, their mouth is wide open, and it's su usually it's super painful. Uh, we're going to look at this one TikTok that got pretty popular recently. Uh, this girl dislocated her jaw, and she just seems happy-go-lucky, but for most people, it's not like that. It's pretty painful. It's pretty painful. Before we get into that video, we're going to talk a little bit about the anatomy here. And so we're going to just basically go over the basics, and, and I'll show you a little diagram. I'll put it up on the screen. And then I'll show you clinically kind of what it looks like as well. All right, so we have a just a quick little anatomic representation for you. Sorry for all the people that are listening and can't see, but uh, I'll try to describe it as best I can. So this is basically your, your TMJ. So this is the condyle of your mandible, and it's usually within this little fossa here, the glenoid fossa. So when you open and close a little bit, your, your jaw is just rotating. So that condyle is just rotating in the fossa. So you want to eat like a, a double Whopper or something, and you want to open really wide. So what's going to happen is it's going to rotate, and then after a while, about an inch or so, it's going to start translating. So this bone is going to move and slide across this eminence. Normally, this eminence is a little bit more of a bump here. This, is, this one's kind of flat. But normally, you're in the joint, and it's just kind of rotating and sliding a little bit. If you open really wide, now it could, you have the potential to have this condyle pop over the eminence here and get stuck. And so this is how people dislocate. And this happens on both sides, right, at the same time. Or it can happen on one side, but usually it's on both sides. So what's happening is this condyle is opening so wide it's getting over the hump here. And those ligaments that are around here aren't doing enough to, to keep it in place. So basically it's stretched over. And it usually just doesn't just slide back in because usually this is a little bit of a hump. So it's just going to get stuck here. So what do you do? You have to kind of push it back into this spot. And it's painful, right? It's way stretched out here. That's a lot of pain. So this is the problem that we're dealing with. And so clinically, what you need to do is when you're standing in front of the patient, you can take your fingers and kind of get on both sides of their jaw like this, okay? I usually get my thumbs around those molars, like on the tops of the molars here. And I'm just making sure, if they're awake, I'm making sure they're completely relaxed as possible. Like I don't want to feel any muscle tension in their masseters and the floor of the mouth and their neck or shoulders. And you have to keep kind of reminding them to just, they're like jello. You want them just to relax. And at the same time, I'm taking my fingers and I can actually kind of feel the floor of their mouth to see if it's tense, their cheek muscles, everything like that. So you need to do this when they're completely as relaxed as possible. Otherwise, it's not going to work and it's going to be a lot more painful for them. So I'm doing that at the same time. I'm just waiting for the time when I feel that they're, they're at their most relaxed state. And then you want to do a quick motion where you push down and back. And so what you're doing is remember that condyle in the fossa, you're trying to pushing it down to get over that hump and then back into position. You don't want to go down and back. What you really want to do is more of a, a C. So you want to go down and back in a curvature. So basically down and back, down and back. And then once they're there, close them. You don't want them opening and just re, you know, re-dislocating themselves. So that's the trick. 
And the, the biggest, the biggest trick is making sure that they're completely relaxed. And oftentimes I've done this where the patient's in the chair, I'm just talking to them and basically I can get them and feel where they're, they're at their most relaxed state. And that's when I just push it in. Now here's a little trick I learned in residency. I think I've only tried this one time and I kind of always forget to try it, but it's a thing. So like when the patient comes in, say you see this patient in the ER, in the office, on your farm, I don't, I don't know where you're seeing them. If you're just examining them and you look in their mouth and say you have a tongue blade or something, and I've uh, one of my one of my attendings told me he did this before and it worked a couple times for him. You just kind of pretend that you're going to examine them and so you kind of look in their mouth a little bit. You put the tongue blade back there and you just touch their uvula really quickly. Oftentimes that elicits like a gag reflex in people and they reflexively kind of they can reduce themselves. So they can kind of do that motion where they just get their jaw back in position quickly. And so, yeah, that's the thing. I mean, you could try that and just, hey, let me just take a look inside and boop. And then, you know, see if that works. If it doesn't, then, you know, try the other way. I've been able to reduce people chair side probably 80% of the time. And the other 20%, we just can't get them comfortable enough. And, you know, that's an IV sedation and, and just do it that way or take them to the operating room, depending if, you know, where you're at. So I think it's, it, it works really well if you're able to do it and you don't want to torture them. You don't want to try like two or three times and because each time you try and you don't do it, they're going to get more tense the next time. So, I mean, there's a limit to how many times you want to try this, but for most people, I've been able to do it chair side and it's worked really well. They've been extremely happy. So that's that. So at the end here, we can kind of get into my video. So this video at the end here is me reducing a patient. This patient had a seizure, woke up with their jaw dislocated, went to the ER. They're, they couldn't reduce it. And the ER called me like at 4 or 5 in the morning. And our office usually opens at 7. And I was like, well, just send them to the office. You know, does it make sense for me to go to the ER now? They've been there all night. They're probably tired. So they come to the office you know, having been in the ER most of the night, essentially. And I was able to just reduce this patient clinically in the office, just chair side. And so that worked out really well. And that's that. So let's get into the video. Ever since I left the city, you. All right. So we're just going to get into this TikTok that that's been floating around recently. Uh, this patient is too happy to be dislocated. I've never seen a dislocated patient this happy, but... Here it is. She's locked jaw. Her last name? Sinatra. First name? Jenna. Obviously can't close your mouth Thank drooling you. all the time. Like Losing a lot of moisture that way too, right? It's usually a lot more painful than this, by the way. <laughs> really? I'm good to know. I'm sorry to laugh. <laughs> Getting her x-rays. Yeah, you're dislocated. It hurts when you do that. Mm -hmm. So she's going to start an IV and we're going to give you some... They're going to sedate her. Stuff. Didn't okay. really try, and we're gonna try and bedside. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. What is that? What's that? What's that? That's basically it. Yeah, she's just documenting her experience before the actual procedure. They gave her some muscle relaxants. I'm not yeah, sure what that yeah, was, we'll but something. So that's that. So what's really happening here? I'm going to put this little graphic up here. So anatomically, uh, the, uh, the temporomandibular joint, it's usually in that fossa. And you can see on this graphic, it's just moved forward. And it's over that eminence or the hump there, and it's stuck. So you need to basically physically grab it. <laughs> push it down and back to get it back into position. The problem is there's there's muscles around it, there's ligaments around it, it's painful. So it's not something that's easily done. And it's also one bone but two joints, right? So there's a joint on this side, there's a joint on this side, and you have to do them at the same time. So there's a lot going on there. And then you're just gonna see on this patient here, this is her with her mouth open. If you just kind of look at the skeletal relationship here, this is a different patient, but this is the patient you're going to see on the bottom on the on the on the video coming up, but this is how it's dislocated. You see that condyle is forward past the eminence, right? It should be back into that fossa, and but that's it's stuck in that open position. You can see how wide open that you know that patient is. So this this uh, image isn't from this this uh, TikTok lady. <laughs> but this is from another patient, but you can see anatomically what's happening. So 
Again, so this is these images are from the video I'm going to show you in a minute, but you can see on the, on that uh, sagittal scan there that that condyle is way forward of the eminence, right? You see where the arrow is and it's pointing. It should be where the arrow starts from, but it's it's dislocated anterior or forward. And you can see on the 3D film below it, it's the same image, just a 3D version of it. This is, again, this is that patient that was in the ER most of the night, came into the office super early, and I was able to just relocate the patient without sedation or any sort of medication at chairside. And so that was nice. And so you'll see me doing that. I'm not going to talk much during the video because I want you to hear what I'm saying and how I'm trying to make sure that the patient is relaxed enough before I do anything. And while I'm talking to the patient, I'm also kind of feeling and gauging their level of relaxation. And so I want to make sure that they're relaxed, their tongue is relaxed and all that stuff. So here, let's just get into the video. You're good. You don't have to do anything special. Just relax your tongue. I don't want any tongue. Tongue is a little tense. Like jello. Okay. They're not ready yet. Just relax your tongue there. I just want you to relax your tongue. So it's those little still checking the tongue. Like it's still like pretty tense. Of your mouth. It's like the bottom of your mouth like jello. Okay? And just relax. If you want to close your eyes and relax, it's whatever is easier for you. Relax your shoulders. And you have to talk nice and soft okay. too. And just relax. Nice and relaxed, okay? And just relax your tongue there. Close it. Don't open it. Don't open it. You can see that she's okay. pretty happy. So the next it also hurt a little bit, but she's pretty well, happy, okay. and she's happy that it's over. Show me your teeth. The ordeal is over. So that's together, that. Okay. So hope you guys enjoyed today. It was an interesting one. And um, like I said, this is not going to work in every situation, but it works most of the time. So it's something to keep in mind. Um, if you're the patient or you know someone who you know has a dislocated jaw, or if you're in a treatment capacity to help people, you know, so you could be anyone, right? So that's basically it. Hope you liked it. Yeah, we pass around the beat like a Yeah, we pass around the beat like a joint. If you're taking up my time, I'ma hit the invoice. Pass around the beat like a split.